Welcome to this Commander deck tech, featuring God Eternal Bantu's Treasure Factory. This is a budget, medium power artifact deck that fills up the board with cheap tokens and then sacrifices them to draw tons of cards, winning with a few important combo pieces. This deck combines a lot of draft chaff into a functioning, if a bit dirtily, combo deck. God Eternal Bantu is a 5 mana 5 6 with Menace. When she enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice any number of other permanents you control and then draw that many cards. This ability is extremely powerful alongside cheap token generators and recursive creatures, instantly refilling my hand on a wide enough board. Bantu also has the God Eternal Death effect, going third from the top of my library instead of to the graveyard when she dies. These two abilities have a very interesting interaction, with an instant speed sacrificing effect, such as Witch's Oven or Ashnod's Altar. By sacrificing Bantu in response to her own trigger, and then sacrificing at least three permanents, I can draw Bantu right away, and be ready to cast her once more with no commander tax. Black is not known for its artifact synergies, but there's still a few to work with. There are several efficient black and colorless artifact token engines creating food, treasures, servos, thopters, and mer tokens. Bantu does not care exactly what she is sacrificing, but a few other cards care about artifacts going into the graveyard. Disciple of the Vault and Marionette Master are the deck's primary win conditions, draining my opponent's life whenever Bantu sacrifices a board full of artifacts. Scrap Trawler doesn't work with tokens, but it does generate a ton of value from larger artifacts and a full graveyard. The most useful tokens are treasures, since they can be turned into mana as usual, or cards with Bantu, and there are several interesting ways of generating them. Pitiless Plunderer is very strong alongside Bantu and other sacrificers, creating a full treasury after a huge Bantu sacrifice to play all of the cards I just drew. Ruthless Knave isn't priced as nice, but is self-sufficient and can draw cards in a pinch. Treasure Map smooths out hands and grabs extra cards when it flips into Treasure Cove. Classic Meme Card, Revel in Riches, is the best treasure factory, creating tokens from removal spells and threatening an instant win with enough treasure, working especially well with board wipes. Other than treasures, the deck is filled with ways to create servos, mer, and thopters. Retrofitter Foundry is the most efficient card to pump out artifact creatures, letting me dump extra mana into untapping it. Mer Battlesphere and Thopter Assembly create five creatures from just one card, the perfect fit for a Bantu deck. The Battlesphere is also an effective attacker. Sly Requisitioner refills the board with servos after Bantu lands, and can be cheated out quickly thanks to Improvise. There are a couple of self-recurring creatures that don't mind dying to the God Eternal. Scrap Heap Scrounger and Salvage Titan use the graveyard as a resource to come back over and over. Other than Bantu, the deck has some additional ways to sacrifice artifacts for value. Syndicate Trafficker and his friend Moriok Rigger grow to be huge attackers. Herald of Anguish is an enormous demon that forces discards and removes creatures. This is the perfect place for Scrapyard Recombiner. Most of the deck's creatures are constructs, so it can always grab exactly what I need, such as removal in Noxious Gearhulk, or tokens from Hanger Backwalker. As always, there are a few janky cards I could not resist putting into this deck. They may never find another home. Immortal Coil draws cards and protects from direct damage. It can be sacrificed to various other cards in the deck before it causes me to auto-lose the game. Golden Guardian transforms into the powerful Golden Garrison land that ramps and pumps out big tokens. In order to transform, it can either lose a duel to Bantu or duel a token and get sacrificed to some other card. By sacrificing it in response to its own trigger, Wishclaw Talisman is a good budget demonic tutor. In multiplayer games, I can give it to opponents in order to answer problems Mono Black cannot. Etherworks Marvel is the only energy card in the deck, but it doesn't need much help. 
it can cheat out a free card after every Bantu trigger. Two bizarre old cards that I dug up for this deck are Soldevi Adnate and Priest of Yogmoth. These can sacrifice artifacts for big mana rituals to cheat in Bantu. The rest of the deck is plenty of card draw and removal that synergize with artifacts, a lot of mana rocks, and a couple board wipes to work with Revel and Riches. Thanks for watching this God Eternal Bantu deck tech. Enjoy recycling and pillaging.